Today's video is going to be about the best programming languages to learn for beginners in 2021. I'm going to start off the video by going over the different languages that I recommend you should learn and then I'll kind of go into the pros and cons of each language and then after that I will kind of help you create a study plan to make sure that you're you know learning effectively and you're making the most out of your time and then lastly I will help you determine what language you should learn first depending on what your goals are and what you want to learn to code for I think that each language has a different um, benefit to learning so if you're interested in kind of learning a little bit more make sure you keep watching and also if you want to join the life by Sophie code fam make sure you like and subscribe let me preface this video by saying regardless of what language you learn first you will still be able to learn programming or computer science fundamentals so it really doesn't matter what language you start off with truly there can't there are recommendations for you know you should choose this language or this language but at the end of the day regardless of what language you use you can learn computer science concepts in any language so thought it was important for me to say that the first language that I recommend that you learn I don't care what anybody says because this language is near and dear to my heart it's one of my favorite languages and always will be and also when I was interning or excuse me when I was interviewing for my internship I interviewed in this language so the first language is Python this language is a little controversial because some people think that it's you know highly abstracted and it's not technical enough but Newsflash, Python is a very powerful language. Yes, it might be syntactically easier, it's incredibly intuitive, but for those reasons, I think it's a great first language to learn. And on top of that, there are so many use cases that you can do, you know, there's so many use cases for Python, from game development to desktop GUIs, um, data science, artificial intelligence. You can do so much just right off the bat. Um, because like I said earlier, it's an intuitive language. So the first language I recommend is Python. Oh, and not to mention all of these huge companies are using it. Facebook, Instagram, Spotify. Um, the list goes on and on. So if these huge powerhouse companies are using this language, that should be your indication. The one con that like I kind of talked about a little bit is that it is kind of it abstracts a lot of programming concepts and so it can be a little bit harder moving forward to kind of dive deep into learning the computer science concepts that you'll be tested on, on algorithms, data structures, things of that nature. However, I think it's still a great language to learn and it's one of my favorites, like I said. The second language that I recommend you learn when you are going along your programming coding journey is C slash C++. I can't believe I said that uh, college Sophie would hate me for saying that and admitting that because let me tell you when I was learning C++ seg faults everywhere that's all I knew was a seg fault here seg fault there seg fault everywhere <laughs> okay so let me get let me explain why number one when you learn C++ it teaches you so much about programming um, it is one of those languages that I think is great to get a good grasp on data structures and algorithms and that is always the bread and butter of technical interviews. So when you get a job you usually will have a technical interview and learning how those um, data structures and algorithms really work. I think C++ does a great job of kind of helping you figure that out with the pointers and garbage collection and just all of this crazy hard stuff. <laughs> um, it, it helps. And so I think C++ is a great language to learn. I will say that C++ is used at companies like Microsoft, um, Evernote, LinkedIn, and it's used when performance is critical. It's an incredibly fast um, language. And so with that being said, the learning curve is steep. Um, the con I would say is that it takes a while to be productive with C++ where in comparison to Python, let's say, for example, with Python, I'd say you could probably build something maybe within the first two weeks of learning how to code. However, with C++, let me tell you, with C++ and at my school, I was using Vim as the editor. 
it took me probably like two weeks to like just figure out the environment and like what the heck was even going on like I was just so confused but eventually I understood and I, I, I got a grasp a grasp on things with that being said do I still code in C++? No. Do I want to? Absolutely not. But I think it's one of those languages that you need to learn in order to really help you understand, um, you know, programming and computer science. It's the base for a lot of different languages such as Java. Um, so I think it's important. Um, it's an important language to learn. Nobody, nobody kill me for saying that, but I said what I said. Language number three, Java. Where do I begin? Java is a beautiful mix of Python and C++. That's how I think of it. I think that Java has the ability to do many, many powerful things. And it is, like I said, the happy medium between Python and C++. You have things like automatic garbage collection. Um, the learning curve isn't as steep as C++ and you can do a multitude of things and it is very platform friendly. It is supported across a multitude of platforms. And on top of that, there are so many different frameworks that you can use to make your life 10 times easier. On top of that, the Java developer community is absolutely huge. So you can always find your answer or um, your error with just a quick Google search. And I guess that's the same for C++ and eh, I will not say that. Maybe for Python, but I just think that the Java developer community is absolutely huge. There's so many people doing uh, big things with Java. You have companies like Amazon, Twitter, Google that are like Java hubs. Also the company that I work at uses Java. Um, and so, yeah, I don't really have anything negative to say about Java if I'm being completely honest. I will say that there is some bit of a of the learning curve but it's not as steep as when you're learning C++. Um, Java is also used in the Cracking the Coding interview prep book. Um, that's the prep book that I used when I was um, interviewing for my internship. I will have a link in my description box if you want to check it out. I highly recommend it goes through questions that recruiters typically ask with explained solutions and it's a really good book to kind of just help you prepare yourself for any question you may be asked in a technical interview. But aside from that, Java is a great language all the way down to development on like for smartphones, like Java just kind of, and I, I don't, I feel like I don't have that much to say because I feel like I'm always learning with Java. Like there's always something that I still don't know and that I'm still kind of discovering. So I, I, I like Java. Let me know what you think. I feel like I've, I've gotten interesting perspectives on Java, but regardless, I think Java is a great language to learn as a beginner. The last language that I will mention that I think is a great language for beginners to learn in 2021 is JavaScript. It has great use cases for front-end development, and when combined with Node.js, there are also some applications for the back-end. Um, I think that this is still a language that I'm, that I'm kind of learning, so I don't have too much to say about it, but I just wanted to mention it because it's gaining a lot of popularity and I think that um, we are going to start to see a lot more um, JavaScript in the future. So definitely check that out. Now let's move into the second part of the video where I will help you determine your study plan. So your study plan can honestly be broken down into three main things. Number one, why do you want to learn how to code? What's the goal? What's the purpose? This is gonna help you stay motivated when things start to get tough because trust me, they will get tough, but that's the best part. When you finally figure out, figure it out, it will be that much more rewarding. Number two, you need to solidify the resources that you're gonna use, right? Is this gonna be an online course? Is it gonna be an in-person class? Are you gonna take a boot camp? Are you gonna do a certification? Are you gonna self-teach? For any of the other ones where you're doing an outside program, you need to, you know, sign up, schedule an allotted time every single day to dedicate to just that class and also to study outside of that, um, your allotted class time and um, office hours. Also make sure that you have found some great YouTube resources or online free resources to learn. If you don't want to go the route of taking a boot camp, a class certification, you can self-learn. 
literally go on YouTube type in learn how to code or learn computer science or learn Python learn Java learn whatever some a seer a playlist will pop up and you just have to be dedicated and say you know what I want to learn this language and follow the same steps Set in a lot of time every single day that you're going to be watching this video and that you're going to be learning how to code. And then aside from the class time, set it aside a time where you're going to be doing your research, where you're going to be finding free online resources, example problems, all that great stuff. Number three, practice. Practice, practice, practice. I've been coding since I was a junior in high school 11th grade let's count shall we 11th 12th freshman in college sophomore junior senior been out of college for about a year and a half i've been coding for about seven and a half years and i still don't know a lot of stuff that is coding that's computer science that's the tech industry things are constantly changing it's just so much information. You cannot possibly know everything. But I will say this, I'm a lot better than I was seven years ago. I won't get stuck on certain problems for hours on end because I've already done my due diligence and I've been stuck on certain problems for hours on end. With that being said, it takes a lot of practice. Practice makes perfect. And if you go a certain amount of time without coding, you will kind of lose your, your zhuzh, your, your kind of, your, momentum so you need to practice a lot practice means doing practice problems practice means if the uh, class or my professor or whatever gave me a certain concept not only am i going to do the homework they assign i'm going to find problems online to do those as well and most importantly i'm going to find projects that i can do projects are not only fun but if it's a side project that has no pressure and it's solely for you you can explore more with computer science and oftentimes when you're learning just because you want to do something for yourself you end up enjoying it more and you end up learning a lot more so applying what you're learning in your classes or your online whatever you decide to do and then taking that and applying it to a real life project that is how you learn actually practicing watching somebody code while you're in bed watching watching somebody do it watching your professor that trust me no because when you're actually doing it yourself and you're not watching somebody so many different questions come up so you have to practice yourself so that is basically the outline for creating a study plan number one what is your purpose number two how do I want to do this? Do I want to go to college? Do I want to get a certification, boot camp, online resources? If so, I'm going to allot a certain amount of time every single day for my class time and a certain amount of time to research topics outside of that class time or work on a side project. Number three. What was number three? God, you, I, I, I was really getting into this and I completely forgot what, oh, the most important part practice <laughs> number three make sure you practice practice is so important so like i said make sure that you have all of those things solidified and you will definitely be success if you have questions or if you want to know more about different languages or if you want me to make a video on something make sure you firstly like and subscribe and then also leave me a comment and i will be sure to get back to it but in the meantime have a great rest of your day and i love you guys bye